in Eyes Wide Open, Volume 1, you wrote, Sexiness is an intangible quality, so it can be hard to spot the value of it. And some cultures, especially ours, try to paint sexiness as hardly valuable at all. Can you please explain why sexiness is valuable? Let's take the example of a car. Your car has a purpose, yeah? Yes. What's the purpose of the car? Um, to get us from point A to point B. Yeah, pretty much. The car's function is to get you from point A to point B. Yes. But, okay, does the car also have a form, a shape? Yes. A material? Yes. An appearance? Yes. Right. And that form can either be very aesthetically pleasing, it can be very appealing, it can be very sexy, it can be a sexy car. Yes. Or it can be very bland and unappealing and unsexy. Yes. This goes for most things. Most things have a form and a function. Making sense? Yes. Okay. And so if life, nature, the universe whatever, gives everything a form and a function, do you think it's wise to suck at one of those things? Have a really shitty form or a really shitty function? No. Okay, so a certain level of appeal is basically necessary. Well, yeah, no one wants to buy an ugly car. Right, but it's not just that. No one wants to plant an ugly flower. Right. I mean, we do if we have to. Like, I hate Bird of Paradise. I would never plant that, but lots of people like it. Regardless, I'm just saying there's a substantial tendency to seek out appealing form yes. and not just focus on function. Yes. Nature understands this. Life understands this. That form and function are both very, very important. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So now, are you familiar with the yin yang symbol, the Tao symbol? Yes. So that timeless symbol has been around for thousands of years symbolizes the feminine and the masculine in everything. And it symbolizes the form and the function in everything. And when those two things collaborate, then you get true greatness. You get a very whole creation, a very holistic thing. Yeah, like it flows together, right? Exactly. Yeah, okay. Like an octopus has a function mm -hmm. and an octopus also has a form. And that form is the perfect form for that function. And so an octopus might not be considered sexy to most people right but it actually kind of is and it's sexy to other octopi yes this is what happens when something fulfills its form and function quite well okay mm -hmm. but most people in our society quickly become out of balance on this and they over accentuate function and under accentuate form they they make it out to be that function is super important mm -hmm. efficiency productivity mm -hmm. intellect the financially lucrative function of something is what most people care about. Who gives a fuck how it looks? Okay, I understand what you're saying. If you said you wanted to sit around all day and work on your form, do makeup, beauty, and so on, most people would give you pushback. Oh, yeah, because... That's not productive. Yeah, yeah. So you can see that our modern day society very often leans hard on the function and dismisses or minimizes the importance of form. Yes. But here's the thing. Sexifying the form pretty much always turns into added value. If we go back to your car example, mm -hmm. way back in Henry Ford days, cars looked like a box on wheels. They were like some giant clunker thing. And you might get the odd person who appreciates the classics or something, but you wouldn't go out and buy one of those these days. No, they were really not my time at all. Yeah. Yeah. Most people want a sexier car. And the people who don't want one are usually just scared of it. They're scared it's too pricey, high maintenance, someone's going to steal it, yada, yada, yada. Yeah. But they, they desire it, though. They look at it. They see it in their head and in their heart. There's a little frisson of like, mm, that is a nice car. That is a sexy car. So when you sexify the form of a car, it becomes more valuable. Ferrari, way back in the day when they debuted, they saw all the ghetto boxy cars and the Ferrari designer took inspiration from women's magazines, Cosmo and stuff, and saw all the flowing lines of fashion and the beautiful curves of the models and so on. And he was like, I'm going to use this inspiration for my car, my design. My design should be as beautiful as a woman. Italian dude. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I'm not surprised at all. So <laughs> stereotypes I'm playing off of. super flirty. So yeah. I got you. I don't know. <laughs> but he happened to be an Italian designer and this is what he did. And it created one of the most luxurious, prestigious, high status, high value cars on the market at the time mm -hmm. because he was willing to go sexier. And to this day, Ferrari is a pretty sexy brand. I mean, they've had some controversies and made some mistakes, but any car even like a Ferrari, a Porsche, a Lamborghini... Yeah, these are form and function. Yeah, and they saw the other cars that were just function. They, they didn't care about form. They just threw some slabs of metal on some round tires and it's like gets you from A to B, whatever. Or they were going for safety, like Volvo. Like 
It's a tank. And I'm like, yeah, it looks like one too, right? What would you pay more for? A Ferrari or a Volvo? What do you want in your garage or in your driveway? I'd rather have a Ferrari. Which one makes you look better to your friends? A Ferrari. Which one is higher value? A Ferrari. Yeah, Yeah. exactly. Same thing when you go to your closet. You open your closet. If there's a bunch of drab things to wear. Yeah. Yeah. And even if you do wear them, are people seeing you in a positive light? Are you getting extra drink spot for you? Are doors opening for you? Are people praising you? Are you getting beauty privilege? No. No. But if you dress up, slut it up a little bit, show off, (laughs) show some beauty. Yes. Then all those things happen. Yeah. Then you're seen as higher value. And there's always a few people who prioritize something different. Like, oh, I prefer to be modest and not be disturbed. And I prefer my privacy. So I like to dress more modestly and dress down and so on. It's like, fine. Okay, so sexy is not that value to you. But this is a small percent of the population. Most people want to be that sexy version. Most people want that sexy car. Most people want that sexy wardrobe, at least to a certain degree. And so deep down, everyone kind of knows that sexy is valuable. You, you know it. You just know it. 